Hello everybody, this is Gula here, also known as Brian Shannon, just with a quick tutorial uh, in order to try and get a cheap effect for volumetric lighting and inside of almost any engine. This type of effect should be able to work inside of city skylines and yeah, so here in my demo scene we see that we have just a basic kind of setup, a really crappy model. It's just a uh, street light. And what we want to do is we want to add this kind of thing to it. I just took it one right out of the oven here. And what it is is it's just a uh, cylinder that I've kind of shrunken up at the top part and uh, applied a certain material to it with a, little, a very minor amount of material trickery to create this illusion that there is um, kind of like a cone of light coming off of this. And this is a very common thing that you see, especially like in older gen titles, uh, just to kind of give you the illusion that like, yeah, that light source here is emanating the light that you see coming out here. And it really doesn't matter, like, you know, like where I move this to, it's just kind of, it's intended to be on the light source itself. And if I want to, you know, I can scale it around and I can make it do other things. Like get wider, get smaller, get taller, it doesn't really matter. But however you want to look at it, um, and if we check out the material that I have set up for it, it's actually pretty simple. Actually, the first thing I'll go over is the shape. So all the shape is, is a cylinder, and that cylinder has no top and bottom. Um, I wanted to use a cylinder that has less tries. This cylinder right now is 120 uh, tries, so 60 faces. Um, you could theoretically use one that has less, but the reason why I went with this high of a cylinder is because you'll see if I take out a s smaller size cylinder right now and do kind of the same effect to it, there is a weird sort of artifacting that will happen. And uh, I think that if you follow the method that I did, you'll kind of avoid that. So here's the artifacting I'm talking about. in. Notice along each one of these edges, there's kind of like um, a smoothing issue that happens. Now you can kind of cover this up by just increasing the amount of um, um, amount of subdivisions on the cylinder itself, which is what I did in my version. So um, just creating the cylinder is not enough. You're going to need to reverse the faces on the cylinder on the outward, um, you know, the main kind of faces that we'll be looking at. So I'll invert my selection here and then make sure that, yeah. So with these faces selected, all I've got to do is reverse the normals. And so in Maya, this is what it looks like, but in your engine, your mileage may vary depending upon what uh, thing you're using. So anyway, now that I've already got one, we'll just use this one. And so when I re-imported this one into here, it comes into uh, Unreal looking something like this. And here it is now. So because the, uh, the the normals are flipped on it, we're actually seeing the inside version rather than the outer facing faces, and that's working as intended. So there's some other things that we do inside the material that will help make this more clear. Uh, first thing you should know is I'm using two, um, two textures right now, and this is the first one. It's like a gradient, very basic, but um, it's not a, a full gradient. Uh, it kind of started out something like this, but then I just multiplied the channels on top of each other. And more so, you want to get the black on the top and the bottom, and then, you know, just kind of like a standard gradient. The other thing is just a, a cloud. We're going to need, like, uh, go up in Photoshop and you need to do render and a new layer as clouds, and it creates something like this. So once you have both of those textures, you just import them into your engine. I, I'm using Unreal, so I've already got them in here and set up. So here's my volumetric gradient and my clouds are right there. And now inside my material, let's go check that out. This is the material that I have set up for this. So over on the left side, you won't really see much. Um, actually, you won't see probably anything at all. But generally speaking, I usually like to just see how it actually looks in the world anyway. So um, the way that I've got it is pretty basic. It is a translucent material, and it has only entries into the emissive color and the opacity. Here is my main texture sample, uh, which works for the UVs that I've set up for that particular thing. We'll go check those out real fast. So on this guy, the UVs look something like this. 
And note that they're pretty flat overall. Uh, that's the only thing that you really need is just, uh, it takes up the full UV space. You know, something that looks like this would be pretty improper because you just have bad seeming issues. So making sure that it's totally filled up between the zero and one space is what you're looking for. And that's what we've got on the object that's currently in there on this guy. So uh, the next thing is you want to make sure that this is acting, this texture sample is acting as your mask for the volumetric uh, color, which is this sample here. So to connect that in, you use a multiply, and then you can change the color of how you want your light to be. So in my case, if I wanted this to be a pink light, I could just do that right there, and now I have a pink light. But I don't want to do that. I want it just to be this color light, this kind of yellowish sort of light, and there I have it. So the next thing that I need to make sure that is all set up is the opacity channel. And there's actually one function in here that I'll get to in a second that I'm, I'm missing. It goes right here. I'm not sure if you can see the marquee selection. But anyway, um, yeah, so let's just go through this step by step for how I've got this set up. So I've got a clouds, which is like a panning texture. It's sort of just a noise. Um, this is my panner node that I've got set up into here. This is creating this sort of like smoky, misty kind of effect that kind of breaks it up a little bit. And you'll also notice that I have a Fresnelling effect. Now, if we were to look at this exact same material without the Fresnel on it, I'll show you what that looks like. It's kind of not all that great. It's kind of hard edged and yeah, just doesn't work out as nicely. So it's very noticeable there. And I think there's some other stuff that's going on there too inside the Fresnel. Like I can actually control the Fresneling amount, but the, the short of it, the shortest explanation I can give you is that these hard edges on the side are definitely what you're trying to not have on this kind of like glancing angle. Because obviously this doesn't look cool at all. Uh, one way to counteract that is to just have some uh, Fresnel node that is in there as a one minus. So it's basically like remasking that out and put that into here right into your opacity. And if you notice, now it's kind of got like soft edge on the sides. And if I play around with these values, so this is like the exponent in, the base reflect fraction in, um, if I mess with these amounts, I can kind of control the amount of Fresnelling that's happening on the object. I'm just going to copy this value out of here because I know that, that value is working. But if I bump this all the way up to like 0.6, you can really start to see that you're like losing sort of that effect on there. If I make this one, it's pretty much off. Or if I make it three, or I can make it like 600. And it's just, it looks totally sharp. So you're pretty much counteracting the entire idea of having the Fresnel on there to begin with. So let's go back to our, my old value that I use is 0 0.052. Um, your value for your project might vary. And in this instance, what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to make sure in like multiple lighting setups if it will continue to work. So in my scene that I have here, it's kind of like, uh, supposed to be an interior dark scene. I was using it for some doing some VFX work. But anyway, yep, and it w looks pretty good in here. And the other thing that I can control is this other parameter, which I have set to 0.6, and who knows what it actually does, but let's just play around with some values. So if I make it 0.2, it makes the overall thing, it's kind of like an opacity controller, it looks like. Um, yeah, so if I make it like 0.9, it's pretty misty and dark, and I don't know, it looks kind of kind of nice. But uh, yeah, 0.6, so I, I still want to retain maybe these edges and I don't know, maybe like 0.75 ends up looking probably the best out of the whole thing. Um, but yeah, that looks like it works really well for me. Uh, another trick that I've got, and remember these are very simple multiplies, so if you're pretty familiar with the general idea of how the material editor works, just remember that it's always uh, multiply to kind of blend between two different effects. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I am intentionally using the original texture sample as a screen, I guess you could say, for um, for the effect that I'm trying to achieve here. If I disconnect this panning smoky thing here, let's see what this looks like. It might just totally break. Okay, so it's just it's just basic. It's not anything moving, and this might actually be. Uh, you know, probably more natural for a lot of people for most projects where it's just kind of like, oh yeah, it's uh, it's a light. But if you wanted to kind of <clears throat> increase the amount of believability and having some sort of like 
oh, there are misty things that kind of go through this light. And it, it does call a little bit more attention to it. Um, you can just pan a simple cloud texture to it. And this is actually that cloud texture that I rendered earlier inside of Photoshop. And all that is, is it's just hooked up to a panner node with a very slow pan on it. And it's connected through a linear interpolate, also known as a lerp node inside of, inside of Unreal. And the panner itself is set up to do pretty slow panning speeds. If I bump that panning speed up to like 0.6, actually I'm gonna have to save in, in order for you to see that, but you'll notice it'll go a lot faster. And it like the faster that that goes, it's gonna be extremely noticeable. Um, you know, if you're in the middle of a storm or something, this may be appropriate. But if it's just like the dead of night, uh, I have mine set to like 0.18 right now, and even that is probably too much. But uh, yeah, at least you can notice it. Hopefully you'd be able to see it on the camera here. Yeah, and then as far as how much of the cloudiness that I have on here, this is actually controlled through the linear interpolate itself. So this value, if I set it to 0.5, it's exactly half um, between what you're seeing here and the original gradient with the clouding node itself. If I set it to 0.9, I believe you're seeing more of the clouds, but let's see what we get. Yeah, so in this instance, you're seeing 90% cloud and 10% gradient. If I put this the other way around to 0.1, you'll see, you know, 90% gradient and 10% cloud. And it's to the point where you don't even notice it, that there's actually the cloud panning material on there, but it's happening. It's very, very, very subtle. So I found a kind of a sweet spot at about 0.44. I'm not sure what I had in the beginning of it, but that will probably work just fine. Um, you know, it's just a little bit of motion in there. And, yep, everything is pretty much set up. Once you get your nodes to look something like how I have it here, uh, to, yep, to look exactly how it appears on the screen here, it should all function properly. Uh, one, one mention about this 1 minus and why this is the way that it is, if I switch this back over to not do 1 minus, it will, I think, create an effect that was undesirable. Yeah, it does something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think it's only for knowing, like kind of the opposite of what I wanted it to do. I don't know, I, I forget why I put that on there, but long story short is it fixes it, and that's all that matters in the end. Um, yeah, so this is all fine and good, and this kind of like gets the effect that you want uh, in game. However, the only downside to this is that when it clips with certain objects, so like let's say that I drag this human thing over here, and I drag this human into the light. You'll notice that when it clips into it, it creates this kind of ugly uh, sort of. If I can find the seam, it's not as easily visible, but I can drag this down to help better illustrate it there. So you'll notice there's like this harsh edge that kind of hits the ground. And this harsh edge is actually being caused by something called depth fade. Um, in other engines this may be referred to as something else, but I think it's globally known as that. And here, when I put this into the darkness, you can kind of see it a little bit easier. Um, and this is this harsh edge where the geometry is actually intersecting with uh, the other ground plane geometry right now. So in this mode you can see it, and I'll go back, and now we can fix that actually inside the material editor. You can add actually a depth fade node. And that depth fade node just, it has to be the last thing that goes into the opacity. So wherever your opacity is, you just hook that into opacity and connect whatever was going into opacity into the opacity part. Then you press save and watch the difference here. It'll be a little subtle, but you'll notice it. So now anywhere where this geometry intersects with other geometry, it will be a softer blend between that part of the geometry. So it doesn't matter like how I have this. Like I could even have this at an angle and it's going to look better. It, you know, it's going to look like that as opposed to if I disconnect this, we will see it again. Okay. Yeah. So this is not what we want. We definitely wanted something to be more soft and smooth. Now this is actually a very from what I've heard, this is a expensive process to uh, create that sort of depth fade effect. If um, you know, if you're going for something that's very optimized, you probably are not going to be able to have that on everything in your scene. But uh, for for higher performing machines or higher performing projects, this could be something that is of use to you. 
and everybody kind of has a little bit of a different taste as far as how you want this you know to overall how you want it to look like it doesn't have to be perfect it could just basically be a uh, an illusion anyway so maybe it doesn't cover the whole spotlight of the street light so for instance in my example here my street light is that wide but then the effect itself is only that wide uh, if I wanted to I can make this wider on this end and wider on this end like this and now it's kind of like projecting out over the whole thing or maybe I want it to be taller or longer um, whatever the case may be so that that looks actually probably like it's the best case right there uh, let me go back to full screen just realized I was in the smaller version so it doesn't really make sense up at the top and how that's probably all emanating from there but that's okay like it's if you view it from far away like it all kind of makes sense so that's all I'm really going for is just this idea that there is light emanating from this source because without it it just it's imaginary like how is that light actually getting there so this <clears throat> helps to illustrate the point of where the light source is actually coming from that pretty much wraps everything up if you guys have questions make sure to leave your comments in the video below here and thank you very much for watching Bye-bye.